Yeah, well, what I really love about this film is that I think that while it answers these big questions like that I had at a, as an Omen fan growing up, like where does Damien come from, you also get to know a, get to know a whole new set of characters that weren't in the original franchise. So you really get to discover this whole new world. And um, and I like to think that we had our own message and our own voice with the first Omen, but it's something that fits within the franchise and still, like for fans, there's still going to be lots of fun Easter eggs and we do dovetail into the 1976 version in a really fun way. My approach to making things scary, I think, you know, I think nothing's scarier than real life. You know, and I think the realer something is, the more it's going to infiltrate your mind, body, and soul, and the harder it's going to be to shake it. Because if something's very grounded, and you can find a lot of of um, relatability in that, it's not going to stay in the theater for you. You know, when you leave the theater, all that horror is going to stay. <laughs> Man, that sounds horrible, but but that honestly is. <laughs> I think the best approach. And those are the movies that scare me the most or the ones that are the most grounded. Yeah. yeah, sure. So I think, you know, there's a lot of characters that are beloved in the original and it's really exciting to bring them back in the first Omen and, you know, seeing Spoleto's face and seeing Gregory Peck's face again at the end of the film and Father Brennan is um, really fun. I was always curious as an Omen fan about who Father Brennan was and his character arc. And I think Ralph Innocent did such an amazing job um, with showing us that journey. And, um, you know, I was also really enthralled as a kid with the 666 mark. And so what was really fun on this project was getting to explore the mythology of the 666 even more. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to pin him down. I feel like every movie I've ever seen in my whole life is somehow popping up on screen, you know, <laughs> consciously or not consciously. But, um, I mean, what we did look at a lot was um, the Ellen Pakula gordon Willis collaboration. So, like, one thing that was a huge visual reference but also a real character and pacing reference for us was Clute um, with uh, Jane Fonda. I think that film is so beautiful um, and also subverts your expectations of what you think a psychological thriller or a horror film would be because it focuses so much on character. Yeah, Margaret's so interesting. And, you know, when I first got the script um, and I read it, I was really surprised to find out that the lead was going to be this young novitiate. Um, and it was really inspiring finding, you know, discovering this character more and more because she's, you know, she grew up in an orphanage her entire life. And then immediately after aging out of the orphanage, she goes on to become a novitiate. So it's... She's a fairly isolated um, character that's then dropped in the middle of Rome, which is like a very, a very beautiful and sensual city. And so for a girl who has maybe not thought about her body or, or her sexuality, um, to be dropped into an atmosphere like that, I think is already very confronting and already such an interesting film, whether or not you have the supernatural element ahead of her. Um, so I think that she, she has this really incredible arc where we wanted her to go from heaven into hell in the course of this film. And, you know, the first time you see her, she's rising up above into, into this beautiful golden light. And then we end with her surrounded by flames in this dungeon. And I think that seeing somebody um, learn how to trust their intuition and fend for themselves was such an exciting thing to photograph and to, to see. <laughs>